Finally, we get back to what Xenoblade 2 is really about, the cute girls. That of course means we are going to cover Bridget today. Now Bridget in my opinion is the second strongest tank class blade in the game and before the DLC power creep, I'd say she was easily the strongest. Despite that, she is still only a B tier blade in my opinion, although I guess that says more about the tank blade options than anything else. Regardless, I still think she is a solid blade, which is a very good thing since she is both guaranteed and essentially required on Morag before Chapter 8 of the game. As such, in this video we are going to take a look at Bridget, all of her strengths and weaknesses, and how to use her most effectively for maximum success. If you enjoy this type of guide content, please be sure to subscribe to the channel and look forward to all of my future blade guides, both good and bad, because it does help out so much. So Bridget is another exclusive blade, only being able to be used by Morag and then later on Rex. Her weapon is an entirely unique weapon not shared with any other blade called the Whip Swords. And this is a pretty good weapon that comes with a pretty high natural auto attack for a tank with a high block rate and critical rate. She gets the same block rate tier as Shield Hammers, which is the highest in the entire game, and the third highest critical rate tier and can reach up to 40% with the Moon Matter chip. Her defenses are additionally pretty solid as you might expect from a tank class of blades boasting 25% physical damage reduction and 30% ether damage reduction. The high block rate and high defenses ensures that if you do get hit, she'll have plenty of damage mitigation to function as an effective tank. Despite her good face tanking and defensive capabilities, Bridget is actually more of an evasion tank which can be seen in her 15% agility modifier and she prefers to evade attacks entirely as her entire kit relies on that in order to be the best blade she can be. Her cooldown of 4 is solid as you may expect, but you probably aren't going to want to swap off Bridget much if you do plan on using her if you want to take advantage of her maximum potential. So now let's take a look at what her skill tree offers her. The first skill is Dance of Flames. This adds a 50% chance of evading ranged attacks at level 1, rising all the way to 90% at level 5. This isn't just a multiplicative effect based on your agility or something like that. No, this is just a straight up flat 90% to avoid any ranged attack no matter what. That's actually really powerful even if it's situational. Ranged attacks count as any projectile that can be launched and then will eventually hit you. Think most of Ophion's attacks for instance, and this skill is one of the reasons Bridget is so insanely strong against Ophion in addition to Judgment being an extremely good guaranteed evasion art. This skill is certainly situational, but if you're fighting an enemy with many ranged attacks, Bridget can be a very effective tank to use against them. The second skill is Firewalker. At level 1 when Bridget falls below 30% health, her evasion will be boosted by 20%. This rises up to 60% at level 5, and once again this is a pretty good skill for a tank. If Bridget ever manages to get low on health, this is a nice little emergency system to boost your evasion further and keep her alive as long as possible. It also stacks nicely with other sources of evasion boost like Mister's Foresight, and it is even more effective the more agility you can manage to get on Morag. All around, this is another useful skill for helping her evade attacks, and combined with her good defensive capabilities, if she does manage to even get hit, it makes her a pretty difficult blade to take down. Now, both of these skills are good tank class blade skills in a vacuum, but one thing you should know is that in order for a tank to effectively function as their role, they need to be able to actually draw aggro. Having decent skills isn't always enough if your offensive blades are taking damage and dying, making you unable to use your defenses or evasion. In order to obtain aggro as a tank, you need to be able to do damage yourself. It doesn't have to be as much as offensive blade necessarily, since tanks do get bonuses to aggro, but it does need to be enough to reliably take it a majority of the time. And this is where Bridget's final skill, Warpyre, comes into play. At level 1, it raises damage by 60% for every evaded attack, and at level 5 it raises damage by 10% for every evaded attack, rising up to 250% max. This is Bridget's best skill and what makes her the second best tank blade in the game in my opinion. 250% is a very strong added to damage increase for a tank blade, and Bridget has a lot of ways to stack this up effectively thanks to her already high evasive capabilities, and the fact that she is one of the strongest guaranteed evasion arts in the game with Judgment on Morag, which can allow you to stack this up very efficiently. This damage boost will give Bridget some very high damage even as a tank blade if you manage to stack it up, and lets her out damage quite a few offensive blades. Now this skill is not without weakness. For one, it will reset if you swap off Bridget and then back to her later. Losing the additive means you need to stay on Bridget in order to have the full benefits from this skill. It's also not that useful if the enemy does not attack frequently of course since it will take a long time to stack up in that case. 
It may also not be great if you plan to driver combo lock enemies since they won't be able to attack much anyway. Think about situations where it can be useful and then decide whether you want to use Bridget or not. This is a great skill and goes well with her other two skills and all in all she has a very solid skill tree. But let's check out her specials. Bridget's level 1 special is Heat Haze. It is an ether based special that has 4 hits and is pretty solid and fast. It also has a decent area of effect radius allowing it to be useful against multiple enemies and it can be a good special for chain attacks as well not being too difficult to hit damage caps on it if you have time to stack up Warpyre. It's also evenly distributed which is nice. Besides that though, it's not that amazing. For one, it starts at a damage ratio of 300 which rises to 460 at level 5 and then 480 at max affinity putting it firmly in the lower tier of level 1 damage ratios and has no useful modifiers to speak of. Its effect is increasing aggro drawn from specials by 100%, which isn't really all that useful since if you're doing plenty of damage, aggro shouldn't be that hard to get anyway, and using a stronger special could be a more efficient way to obtain aggro anyway. All in all, it's decent for the animation speed and hit count, and area of effect, but it's not really all that great outside of that. Bridget's level 2 special is Will of the Wisp. It is also an ether based special, but it's a massive 16 hits, which is the highest possible hit count for any special in the game. It's also another pretty solid and fast special, so this could make it a pretty nice option for chain attacks. In practice, however, getting Bridget to the point where she can damage cap this is very hard and not really worth it, but it's still a very good special for chains just based on hit count alone if you have a lot of damage. Outside of that, it's only a single target and offers a 25% accuracy modifier, and its damage ratio starts at 400 at level 1, rising to 560 at level 5, and 609 at max affinity, which makes it pretty average overall. The bonus effect is increasing damage to launch to enemies, which isn't that great for chain attacks, but it can be pretty solid outside of that if you're using driver combos at all. All in all, it's a decent special with some pretty good situational uses. Bridget's level 3 special is Swirling Dragon. It is a physical based special that is 11 hits and actually comes with a critical modifier of 25% on the special, which is finally pretty nice. Hit distribution is even and it's also once again single target. The damage ratio starts off at 500 at level 1, rising to 700 at level 5 and 748 at max affinity, making it pretty average once again as far as ratio. The speed is nothing that impressive here, but 11 hits can still be pretty nice and the bonus effect can actually be useful sometimes since it increases damage when health is 30% or less, and Bridget actually gets that bonus evasion at that health range which can make the special hurt quite a bit if you can fulfill the requirements. Outside of that, it's still pretty average as a special all things considered, and it's always going to be dangerous to be below 30% health. Bridget's level 4 is Azor the Third Soulfire. Now this has two versions depending on driver, but differences are very minor once again. And this is actually a pretty good level 4. It's ether based with a 20% critical modifier and has a damage ratio of 1000. Now 1000 for a level 4 isn't the most impressive since even Dromark had 1100, but the difference here is that the bonus effect is actually pretty good and can be consistently useful. It increases damage to enemies targeting the user by 100%. This is a very good bonus effect for Bridget since she wants to have aggro so you can consistently take advantage of this bonus effect in every situation and it's always available at this power with this effect. This can make it a pretty strong level 4 and definitely a special you should consider using pretty often. As with all level 4s it offers benefits like freezing break and topple and giving you invincibility frames to dodge dangerous attacks or something like doom which can be useful as well. All in all, I'd probably say this is her best special and one you should consider using the most in combat. All in all, Bridget's skills and specials make her one of the best tank class blade options you have, and the setup outside of this should reflect this and appeal to her strengths. For her courtship, I think Takion is easily the best option. Bridget is one of the lucky blades that gets the bonus effect of getting 25% increased critical damage with this courtship, and that's a very nice effect to have. Now compared to Moon Matter, the DPS can break about even just because extra critical rate can be very valuable and math says it averages out. But Tachyon has a higher damage potential and can be more useful in chain attacks with something like a critical symbol on one of your allied drivers, and you also get other benefits like the higher block rate being 38% instead of only 5%, so I'd definitely go with that even if you lose the 13% critical hit rate. If you're not at this point, then focus more on attack stat and critical rate since block isn't hugely important to Bridget since she wants to evade anyway. For aux scores, I'd honestly just say go all in on damage. 
As a tank, your job is to keep aggro, so Affinity Max Attack and Outdoor Indoor Attack are absolutely excellent options. Sure, you can run stuff like Affinity Max Evade or Evasion Focus, but I'd say just get your extra tanking ability elsewhere. Aggro up isn't really that useful for an aux core since more damage means more, more aggro inherently, and you also get the extra benefit of doing more damage, so yeah, I definitely just recommend sticking with this. Bridget has two aux core slots, which is the average amount, which is not all that bad at all, and it still makes her a decent tank blade. Speaking of tanking ability, Bridget works incredibly well with the Katana class blades that have agility modifiers and Pentagon chips for another 50 agility on top of that. This can boost Morag to over 600 agility, and when combined with something like Foresight from Mithra, already makes Bridget nearly unhittable. If you don't quite have the commons or core chips to do this, then feel free to use an accessory that increases your agility by a decent percentage like Dauntless Boots. For my own accessories, I once again went a risky route that's all in on damage. Crimson Headband is great for increasing critical damage even further on top of the Tachyon chip, Whip Attachment is nice to boost weapon power since my additive damage total can also be pretty high already. And I'm even running an Abyss Mass since I'm so confident in my evasion. You can absolutely be much safer than me by replacing this with a different damage increase that doesn't lower your defenses like Divine Van Braces instead. For max safety you can even run something like an Avant Guard Metal for critical healing if you, and if you do plan on chain attacking then Burst Symbols are always a good option on all of your drivers. If you aren't running Foresight or don't have the commons, then as I said, Dauntless Boots are a great option for increasing your evasion further by boosting your agility. All in all, once again, more damage means more aggro, and you can never really go wrong with something like that. For pouch items, since Bridget likes desserts, putting one of the .4 art recharge desserts in the second pouch, like Narsapair Jelly, and then any .4 art recharge item in the other slot will give you maxed out art recharge, and is very nice for ensuring you always have your evasion art up when needed in Judgment. Definitely recommend sticking with something like this. As a final note, I absolutely recommend using Bridget on Morag. You can use her on Rex, but Rex has very slow arts with her that are far, far worse than Morag, and that makes Morag the vastly superior option, as it should be. Alright, now let's get into how to use Bridget practically. So ideally when using Bridget, your first goal should be to evade as many attacks as possible instantly. I have teamed up Bridget with both Mithra and Shulk here, who have evasion buffs to the entire party to make it even harder to hit her. And I also have Judgment just in case I need it to evade a dangerous attack. But overall, I'm going to have just guaranteed evasion against this guy anyway. Tyranitan has a very particularly useful attack against us, Twin Barrel Auto Cannon. Not only is it a projectile attack, but we also have just basically guaranteed evasion anyway on it, and it's also like 10 hits, so it stacks up War Pyre incredibly fast. I'm going to be using my ally specials for the most part, just so I can maximize my chain attack damage with Bridget, especially since she's going to be my main damage and um, tanking threat here with this setup. And I think if you just want to go on a basic evasion focus survival strategy, this is one of the absolute best options you can do. I do end up using my level 4 here to block the Doom status effect, which is an instant kill status effect, and you can actually block it with your level 4 invincibility frame, which is very, very nice, actually. And from there, we're going to use Supernova, and I'm just going to chain attack and kill from there. All of the Twin Barrel Auto Cannons and all the additional auto attacks he's done to me that have missed have pretty much fully stacked up War Pyre, so we've got Bridget's maximum damage potential here, and we'll just be able to chain attack kill with absolutely no issues whatsoever. I do have two burst symbols on Rex and Zeke, however, but that's the only extra damage buff here that I'm having that's not already been seen on Bridget. Now you can combo Bridget with someone like Tor and Cutie Pie using driver combos, you just won't get as many evades then, you'll just have to rely more on um, damage from everything else. Instead of War Pyre damage stacking, which can be an issue sometimes, because Tor can do a lot of damage and get a lot of aggro that way. So you all saw there Tyranna Titan died, so now I'm just going to show off Bridget in challenge mode a little bit here. Same party set up here, we've got Jin and Malos attacking Bridget. I'm going to be able to keep aggro on Bridget the entire time, and they're going to be using a lot of attacks, so I'll be able to stack up War Pyre incredibly quickly. And with my 16 hit level 2 special there, you just saw I'm able to get my chain attack up really fast too, before Malos can use Monado Armor, and just do a lot of damage to him. Now unfortunately I miscalculated a little bit, and he's going to use Monado Armor after this chain attack because I didn't have quite enough damage to kill him, and that's on me for not setting up Mithra and Shulk properly. But it's not really a big deal, we'll just be able to see the power of Bajan Mithra anyway, because they'll be able to use more attacks, and we'll see just how easily Mithra will be able to evade everything no matter what. 
One thing worth noting if you are using Mithra and Bridget is if you use Myth, um, Bridget's level 1 special, Rex has this tendency to swap to Pyro, which means you will lose the Foresight buff. And that is another reason that using Shulk can be beneficial. Because you don't have to worry about Pyro when you have Shulk. However, if you just use the light combos instead, then you don't have to worry about that either, because Rex will stay on Mithra, which is very, very nice, of course. So even with these very powerful multi-hit attacks, like Empty Moment, they're not even able to hit Bridget at all, which is very good. And also with Shulk, you also get Monado Vision, which makes attacks miss you guarantee, which of course means more Warpire stacking if you didn't have enough already. Basically, this setup just allows you to be basically invincible. We're just going to show off one more example of that here. I'm going to use um, Mithra and Bridget against Fiercest Faction. You only get two drivers for this, and I chose Mithra over Shulk for the better guaranteed evasion. But because of that, I cannot use any fire combos on the enemy that um, Mithra is targeting. So I make sure to target Remington after hitting o um, Orion for a little bit here, and that's going to allow me to focus my fire combos on Remington and not have Rex swap off of Mithra, which is very, very nice. Once again, these two drivers, even though they're trying their best to hit me, are barely able going to be able to hit me. Sometimes you'll get 3% and they'll be able to just go through your evasion. And if Mithra does die, you'll be able to see the other skills in effect here. She does actually die a couple times during this because of um, True Bard Counter. I didn't have the Nullify Reflection here. But overall, how to use Bridget, just stack up Warpire, just do a bunch of damage. I'm going to use my level 4 here to almost probably just destroy Skyfist Remington with a burnout here. He's already almost dead. Level 4 specials of 8 attacks do a bunch of damage. Even Bridget can just get a lot of damage in here. You saw that break art was over 300,000 right there, killing Skyfist Remington, which is pretty dang powerful. Now with Orion being the only enemy we have left here, we can focus all of our efforts on him, and he's not going to be a major deal e either. There is one thing I did not prepare for, which is the true bar counter. I don't have Nullify Reflect on anyone. I think that almost bites me in the butt here. I get down to 1 HP, but because of that, I'm able to see Morag's other ability, which is that 60% evasion buff if you're under 30% health. And here it is, the true bar counter. I'm able to revive Mithra after this, but because I am now under 30% health, I get the 60% buff, which is actually even more powerful than Foresight, so he's still unable to hit me, even though I don't have the Foresight buff from Mithra being Max Affinity anymore. So like I said, it's a nice little emergency thing you have here just to increase your evasion and just keep it up no matter what. So even despite this being challenge mode and everything like that, they're unable to hit me at all. I could just do this on any difficulty and have like no issues whatsoever as long as we don't get true bar countered, of course. There are occasionally situations where they'll 3% you, which means they'll hit through your evasion because there's a 3% chance to hit no matter what. Your evasion cannot get higher than 97%. But, for the most part, this is not a major issue. Bridget has the capability of just reaching evasion levels that are basically impossible to hit by any enemy in the entire game, which is always very nice. There's another true bar counter to troll me, but at this point, we basically already won anyway. I'm going to chain attack right after this to get rid of most of the rest of his health bar, just because we have Warpire pretty much all the way stacked up, and our level 1 should do a decent amount of damage here. The Rage Cunner is going to get completely blocked there because of um, me using the Chain Attack, which gives me Invincibility Frames. That's always nice. I use Judgment to dodge the True Sword Bite since I don't have Foresight or my 60% anymore, and then we're able to just finish the fight after that. That's gonna about cover it. To use Bridget, evade attacks, and do a lot of damage after evading. Use Judgment smartly to guarantee evasion against the most dangerous attacks, and use Soul Fire a lot for being a very good special. Offense on tanks is good for aggro, so always go for that. I hope you all learned something useful from watching this video and can see why Bridget is one of the best tank blades in the entire game. She makes Morag immediately useful as a party member when you get her, and stronger in Tora until you get Cutie Pie, which is great. If you enjoyed, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff, and as always, look forward to my future content, and have a wonderful day.